I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond. As we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. Well today we're going to show you a technique of uh, fishing that's a little different than a lot of people have done. I'm Tom Bruno. Good to be with you again, Tom. You too, Terry. Tom, Tom and I just uh, recently did an article for the In Fisherman Walleye Insider magazine on using uh, jigging spoons in the fall to catch walleyes, and we're also looking for wipers today. It's an interesting way to fish, and I think people enjoy it. Uh, it is. You know, people have got to have confidence, though, in what they're seeing on their electronics to make it work. Uh, we're going to fish in fairly deep water. Uh, we're going to see the fish, like you said, basically like part hunting. We uh, hunt electronically, find them, and then we're going to make a presentation vertically and drop the spoon right in their face, and hopefully they'll take that and catch some fish. Yeah, it's a little different than, uh, you, we don't cover a lot of water while we're fishing. We cover a lot of water looking for fish, right. and we spend a lot of time in one small part. You really have to, as Tom said, trust your electronics, and you have to have faith that this hunk of metal fish will eat it. Well, why don't we get out and uh, okay. show them what we're going to well, do. We've done it often enough that we've got confidence, and. We're going to go ahead and catch some fish, okay? Okay, let's get to it. Why don't you tell them a little bit about what we're doing and what the keys are here while we're looking for some fish a little okay. bit. Okay, well, what we're basically doing is using a slab spoon or a slab minnow bait. What it is, a one ounce piece of lead, basically. And uh, we're fishing it on an edge. Uh, up here on top, she's 25 feet, and, and right below us, it's 45. Typically, what happens this time of year in the fall, the shad will school up, the predator fish, like the wipers and the walleyes, gather below them. And uh, when they turn on, as far as uh, uh, going on a, a feeding spree, they actually just uh, voraciously go right through the school of shad, and numerous cripples then happen when they when they blow them out through their gills and walleyes being opportunists, uh, wipers being opportunists, they actually lay below the, the school of shad and they, they simply pick up the, the crippled and dying shad. So um, that's what we're trying to simulate here and, and on this piece of structure it's it's been working pretty well. A lot of people must have believed that article we wrote because there's a it's lot of boats out here today. It's funny, yesterday I had a guy pull up right next to me and, and said, Tom, we're using those flea fly spoons that uh, you know you had the you and Terry talked about in the in the in the magazine. And I said, Well, I am. And they said, Boy, that's, that was a good article that Terry wrote, and that they'd been catching quite a few fish. So. Well, let's see if we can get some yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Looks like some bait fish and some bigger fish yeah, in there. Uh, see if you can hover. They're gonna have to hover right on it. Bring your bow into the wind. Well, you really got to trust your electronics for this kind of fishing. I mean, it's so critical. And because of the abundance of food, the fish don't have to move very far. I mean, you're not going to entice them with your spoon to be traveling long distances to eat it because they're used no, they're to not, having their food right in, right in their face whenever they feel like it. They're not wandering around here. You know, one, as Tom was saying earlier, one of the keys to this is the presentation. You really have to take that and pop that lure up. The, the keys, you've got to get that spoon to come up and turn over so it flattens out and flutters down like a dying bait fish. And typically, the hit will come as that spoon is fluttering down, or sometimes after it flutters and sits there paused, and just the line kind of unwinds and it wiggles. Those are the two times the fish seem to hit it the most. So the presentation is real key. If you just sit here, if you just sit here and just do this, you might get a fish, but it's not very likely. You've got to give it a good sharp snap, get that spoon turn over, and then follow it back down. That's Here we've got, oh, look at them. Boy, I tell you what, they're just so much fun. 
There you go. Look at him. Look at him go. <laughs> that's the wiper. Yeah. Well, that's pretty neat. Well, you know, it shows you that it takes the techniques of a full-time, big-time fisherman like us guys to catch these fish, eh, Tom? Oh, yeah, be in the right place at the right time. I guess. Look, Look at him that. go. He's Look at that rod bend. <laughs> oh, man. That is so neat. I tell you, this, you know, fall fishing can be so incredible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to, I wonder who's going to wear out oh, first. Thing. Who's going to, rod tip he's got. Who's going to wear, oh, there you go, nice wiper. All right. <laughs> These fish are really in tight pods. I mean, we find them and they're like a 10 foot circle. We get out of that circle and we're not on fish anymore. If you look right here on the electronics, this is top to bottom, from the top of the lake to the bottom. This is a, a, a zoom in on the bottom quarter and these are just the depth and temperature and things. And what we're trying to do is right now, you see the bottom, there's nothing there. We're looking for clouds, that would represent bait fish, or more arcs and lines and spots would represent predator fish. Now, like this right here, that's some kind of a big fish right there. The bottom, this is a close-up of it right down there. You can tell by the thickness of the signal indicates the strength. That's a fairly good-sized fish there. This looks more like some little bait fish or something down in here. And up here, this could be a bigger fish or that bottom of a cloud of bait fish, and that's a fish down there. We're looking for those to spoon through. Looks like we're starting to show some there now. Here we go, here we go. Need the net? No. There's a little walleye. A little walleye, break the ice though. Yeah. Get us going. There we go, there we go. Not a big one. Probably a little walleye. Yeah, a little walleye. I think it's way bigger than that one you had though. Okay. Well, you know, 16, 17 inch walleye. Um, they're all fun to catch. You know, there's times of the year when we kill for a fish like that. I've been in tournaments where I had a kill to have a couple of these. Yeah. And right now we're we're actually out looking for bigger fish, but nice, you know, this is a little healthier than the ones I caught earlier this year. Nice look. In good shape. Oh, there we go. Get him back in there. Go back and get some more. Well, we're starting to get a few now. That was all right. Your turn again. Okay. One of the we'll things you'll see us doing is when we're moving from spot to spot, a lot of times we won't have our lure in the water. Um, you, this is a pretty hor uh, vertical presentation. You have to go. Um, you have to go straight up and down really to be effective with it and when we're moving the boat fast looking for fish it doesn't do a lot of good to be dragging that spoon along with us so we'll take it out look till we find some fish on the electronics and then spoon them up hard we're showing a few fish on the screen there Tom I just stuck one right here okay oh well, good I believe it's another walleye Terry oh yeah another walleye the water's all clear they look pretty in the water Good fish. <laughs> what, about the same size? Yeah, about that. Nice fish, though. Nice, healthy fish, though. That bodes well for the future that there's so many of these nice walleyes in here. Yeah. Let him go back. Yeah. There you go, buddy. All right. Well, good job, Tom. Yeah. Still can't well, find the, the wipers. Aren't biting yet, so we might as well catch a few little walleyes. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you've got we've got some awful big walleyes doing this too. That's true. I uh, I have caught some over 30 inches doing this. Yep. So I mean, this one thing about this tactic is that the walleyes or the wipers, either one, you're liable to get into them. All right. This lake has so many of those small walleyes, though. It can be a fun lake to fish, even if the big fish aren't hitting. There's one. There we go. That feels like a little better fish. There you go, Terry. Walleye or wiper? Um, you know, it could be a wiper. If it's a walleye, it's a little bigger. Huh. I think it's a wiper. I think it's probably a medium-sized wiper. Yeah, a little white. It's a wiper. It's a wiper. Yeah. No, that's good. Oh, yeah. 
I'll get him if I can get him without getting hooked. Oh, that's a nice size wiper. If I can get him without getting hooked up here. There we go. Nice wiper. Wipers and walleye spooning in Pueblo, Colorado. Get out and try it, you'll like it. Well, Tom's looking for some fish. Let me show you a little bit about how we rig this up. Now, we showed you the spoon. It's just a jigging spoon, kind of a slender lead one ounce jigging spoon that we lift up and down. We lift that up and try to get it to flutter down sideways. What we do is we put that on a snap. You can see that. It's just a plain snap with no swivel or anything, just to hold it in place and so we can change colors and things quickly. And also to give it freedom for action. Now about a foot, foot and a half up from that, we'll put a ball bearing swivel. And the reason we do that is we jig this spoon up and down, sometimes it'll tend to spin. If you don't put this swivel in up here, you can tend to get your line fairly twisted up. So if you take that, so what you end up with is about a foot, foot and a half of line, ball bearing swivel. And typically, what do you use, Tom? I use 10, 12 pound test. Right. And you can go heavier. Um, it's usually not necessary because even if you get into a big fish, you're in open water here. And if you play them right, you shouldn't have any trouble landing them if you're careful. And I like to use a bait casting rod. And uh, is that what you typically use yeah. for this too, right? Yeah, a level wind reel. Level wind reel or a bait casting rod. And uh, I use about a six foot rod. I use a bit longer. I, I like, se se I personally like seven for myself. Okay, give you a little, a better, leverage. A little better leverage, a little lift and all that. But you can do this, if you, you don't have to buy special equipment to do this. You can do this with a spinning rod, but if you do it with a spinning rod, you need one that's got a fairly heavy uh, action, because when you go to pop that spoon up, if you have too light of a rod, that rod's just gonna bend, you're not gonna get that snap up on that spoon. So you need a fairly stiff rod, but any kind of gear you've got that's got fairly stiff action, and oh, I say anywhere from eight to 14 pound test, and rig it up like that, and you'll be able to fish for these fish. I'm gonna get back and see if I can find some. Found us any yet? Need net? Let's see, yeah, why don't you get it? Okay. We go? No, it won't need it. Won't need the net? It's a crappie. Okay. Crappie! Hooked in the side, that's yep. why it fought so good. Man, nice crappie. I wonder if that's what we're seeing, a school of crappies. Guy put it on a little spoon, he might get a bunch of them. Maybe. That's another thing that happens when you're spooning like this. The fish will hit at that spoon. And as you're jerking it up, and sometimes you're not really snagging fish, you're actually, they're hitting at it. But what happens is they hit and you lift at the same time, sometimes you hit them out on the side like that. Right. And you get a crappie like that hooked in the side, or any fish hooked so they, you can't turn it towards you and you got it sideways, they feel a lot bigger than they are, I'll tell you. Right. We need Trevor back here, getting yeah. in them crappies. Well, let's see if we can find, we're, we're marking a lot of fish here. Um, we're just having, they're not going the way they have been in the, the few days preceding this, but they could turn on at any time, so. Hopefully we'll still get into some real nice fish. You go in there? No. Let me show you again what we're trying to do here. We take these spoons like this. We lower them right down, right down to the bottom. I'm letting it down. And then when I get to the bottom, we're in about 45 feet of water. Now I'm on bottom. I'll tighten my line up, lift that up just a few inches off bottom. And now we use a jigging motion to lift and let it follow and follow it down and let it pause. And snap it up, follow it down and let it pause. And typically the bite will come on the drop or the pause. Now sometimes the more subtle action will work. Sometimes you can just pop them and pause and pop them and pause. But when these fish are really going, that aggressive fluttering of that jig for a long distance seems to draw them in from a little further. Got some fish. We're showing some fish on the electronics here. What we're typically doing is looking for schools of shad and fish on the bottom and then trying to fish right over the top of them. There's one. Wiper. Little one. No, not too little. Decent. He wants to put a hook in me. We go about a, a couple pounds. Decent wiper. Players. 
I think I can get it. Yeah, give me your. Yeah, I better. Nothing like the ones you were catching yesterday, huh? No. How big <laughs> you still all fun though. How 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 big did you say you were catching them yesterday? Five to ten. Five to ten pounds. Yep. Like we're doing it so, nice average size wiper we're out here spooning. Now we haven't caught as many today as we'd like yet, but the day's not over. But when you get into them, you can catch a lot of these and you can catch some big ones too. Need the net, you think? No, no, no. no. Walleye or walleye, you think? Well, if you don't need a net, I'm going to get back and fish. That's a walleye. Oh, yeah. That one might make her. That one might. No. I'm going to swing. That one's close. 17 plus. Need my player. You know, a big portion of what we do is utilizing the new products and making sure that uh, the applications are, are such that the recreational angler is going to be able to enjoy those and make an investment in those products. So. And, and there's some responsibility with that too. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we get to do a lot of fishing, go a lot of places, but with that, um, with the magazines, the TV, being on the tour, people rely on us to help them become better fishermen, to find right. products, to develop techniques. And um, I mean, I, no one feels sorry for us. It's fun. I mean, this is oh, it's bet. passion. But I mean, there's a lot of work, and it, a lot more goes into it than people think. And it's uh, it's not easy to get into. I mean, and it's uh, there's a lot of people that aren't it's making a, a lot of money either. It's it, but it's you have you have to have a love for it. But uh, I guess if I was gonna have to do something, this would be better than some things. I'd, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. We better get back and get some fish, or we won't have this job very much longer. <laughs> <laughs> we got some right here in the depth finder. Look, those look like wipers. How do you think, you know, the wind makes it tougher to do this? Do you think it affects the activity level well, of the fish? I'm not, I'm not so sure it affects the fish as much as it affects uh, us as anglers because we've really got to pay attention to boat control, a little bit of mo movement one way or another uh, on that electric troll motor. You've got to, you've really got to pay attention to that. Boat control is really... I got in, one right here. Oh, there we go. There you go. This one feels like a wiper here, Terry. You think we need the net or do you want me to try to lip them? Uh, tell you what. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Get him up here, I can probably lip him. Oh yeah, it's a wiper. Got him here, buddy? Yeah, I think so. He doesn't put, one thing about these wipers, they all of a sudden take off and they tend to get a hook in you. There we go. Oh. Yeah, it's another decent wiper. Oh boy, we're showing some fish on the electronics. Boy, there's a bunch of fish down there. Maybe we'll get into some here. Just.
one of the critical things in doing this is boat control we were talking about before. Right. How it, it's so important we find those fishing electronics to stay right on top of them so we make that presentation just vertically right. to them. I mean, it's, it's really, uh, I think that's one of the things that novice fishermen probably misses compared to the professional or the full-time fisherman more than anything is understanding boat control and things like well, that. They have to pay a bit of attention to that, absolutely. And you know, a tip is if you use your bow mount or your transfer mount into the wind all the time, you can have control. If you try to go with the wind, you're, you're at the mercy of... It blows all, you around and you can't exactly. control your speed. So you can make your adjustments always going into the wind to hover fish that way. Exactly. So. There we go. There we go. Oh, good. You got one going here. Yeah. I was right. just saying we should call it. I was almost ready to say we should call it a day and... Well, we've got a few, one, you know, one more one, cast. One more, you know, right? one more cast. You know, the, oh, it's a wiper. Good. Boy, these things pull. Jeez. You know... You need, you need this, a net there, too? No, I think I can get them. You know, okay. it's not that big a fish. But man, I tell you what, for their size, they're fish with an attitude. They are. Oh, he's, he's hooked on your line too now. There yeah, you go. Got him there. All right, I'll get him in that. Now, here's the part about these, the biggest part I always worry about wipers is the fact that they're about to put a hook in me, typically. Well, tell me if you need pliers. Let's see if I can get it. I got him. Okay. Here we go. Another wiper. About the same size as the others. We. Uh, well, we caught a number of these. Yep. That's really nice. I mean, I just had a blast. Hey, Tom, thanks. Good to see you again. You know, we've been coming to Pueblo pretty regular again here lately. We have. Well, it's a great fishery. Yeah, you know, if you live in the Colorado Mountain States area, Pueblo Reservoir is a great place to fish. We've got wipers. Let me get him back in the water. There he goes. That's great. You know, we got, as we were saying, we've got wipers, walleyes, and don't quit fishing just because it's fall, you know. People don't think of fall as being one of the traditional fishing times. You get excited about fishing in the spring, you fish through the summer. Some of the best fishing in the mountain yeah, areas yeah. is in the fall. And, uh, you know, we've caught quite a few fish today. Uh, oh. Maybe we didn't get as large ones as we'd like to, that's certainly true, but uh, great day. I mean, here oh. we are mid-November and... Uh, I'm in uh, shirt sleeves. Exactly. It's yeah. beautiful, we caught a bunch of fish. Yeah. Thanks again for sharing this day with me. Yeah. And thank you folks for sharing this with us. And we'll see you next week.